Hello, 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 and welcome to episode 54 of Prog Review. Now, if you're following things, I'm doing this kind of rush a marathon where I review all the albums in the Rush Sectors box set. So, yeah, I'm on Sector 1. That's this little box set here. Look, with a little face on the side. And we're on album number 2, which is which is this one. It's Rush, A Fly By Night. But you know that because you already read the description. So, <clears throat> this is the second album. Um, immediately, I noticed there is a, a change in style with the opening track, Anthem. It begins with a, a protastic flurry and bombardment of sound. Unfortunately, Geddy Lee's screaming vocals is a voice that I don't think I'll ever totally get used to or even love uh, the song is light years ahead of anything on the titular first album but it doesn't it doesn't set my my heart aflame um, the second track best I can returns the band to the blues fed rock of the of the first album but everything is is more tighter which is good uh, and there's um, some memorable riffs involved you know whereas the the songs on the previous album I, I found completely forgettable. This, they they were trying to actually write hooks, which is interesting, but again, it's still hard to um, yeah really grasp it. Um, the third track, beneath uh, beneath between and behind, oh behind, ooh, um, sees the band stretching out. They're stretching themselves. It's good. You can feel them, you know, loosen up, and they are stretching out towards the heady world of prog. Yes, indeed. But it's still rooted firmly in the, the hard rock camp. The only thing that marks this as slightly progressive is the the, the staccato nature of the of the riffing involved. Then things get interesting with Bitor and the Snow Dog, which is features a lyric that for the first time in the band's recorded history at that point adopts a vaguely progressive slant and it features a fantasy story that stemmed from the band being attacked by the record boss's tiny dog. Yeah. Did you know that? The music also veers off into the ex into experimental territory, but you know this time around, for the first time, the music is more playful than anything else. At this point, all, all, all I've heard so far, this is the most satisfying, purely because it's bats in the belfry bonkers. Um, it's also the band's longest track to date, clocking in at eight minutes, which is, you know, you can see that they're trying to write longer pieces and they're trying to, you know, do extended works. The actual title track itself, um, according to Wikipedia, is an autobiographical number dealing with Neil Peart's uh, experiences of moving from Canada to London before he joined Rush, apparently. Uh, for me, it's pretty standard rock stuff, but it's propelled along by a bubbling and delightful bass line from Geddy Lee. But despite all that, it's still pretty light and fluffy stuff, really. Uh, Making Memories is a complete departure, uh, and it has jangly acoustic guitars, and has a, what, what I thought was quite an interesting groove behind it. But it's not its not really prog, is it? It's uh, It's... It's more pop than anything else um, but the thing is is I wasn't offended by it i.e. it wasn't them doing Led Zeppelin you know at a karaoke bar so it was a good thing you know thumbs up um, and then that's followed well the next track you might as well have prog rock written above it in a big fluorescent lettering because you know you're heading into prog territory when they start mentioning characters and places from J.R.R. Tolkien. So yeah, when they invoke the name of Rivendell, we know we're heading into something interesting and bizarre. Again, this is a departure from what's gone before, and it's nice not to hear Geddy Lee screaming his lungs out. It's a wistful, inoffensive piece of fluff but it lacks any kind of musical complexity. And that's what differentiates these songs from progressive rock. And this is something I'll be coming back to in further videos, perhaps. 
the album is then rounded off by a track called In The End. Uh, again, it's it's an inconsequential piece um, compared to the other tracks on the album, like Bytor and Rivendell. And it's really weird because the band appears to have returned to their bland, whoa, yeah, rock roots. So, you know, just skip to the end. Overall, Fly By Night is a quantum leap away from the band's first album. It is, you know, it's apples and oranges, they're completely different beasts. Though there are a few, you know, nods back to the past. Okay, the cons still outweigh the pros, but with Bytor, Making Memories and Rivendell, I can start to appreciate the music. But for me, the limitations are still apparent. Some of the lyrics are, you know, pretty weak, and um, so is the chugging, riftastic rock. Some of the music here, to be honest and blunt, is frankly simplistic. And combine that with Geddy Lee's wallpaper shredding shrill vocals, I can understand why I've always had a natural aversion to Rush. But I didn't find it as upsetting as the first album, so you know it's got to be a good thing. So this one gets a rating. Yes, it really, honestly does get a rating this time. My rating. I'm going to give this two bytors out of five. That's two bytors out of five. Again, leave your thoughts in the comments box below. In the comment box below, uh, you know, thumb it up, thumb it down, thumb it sideways. Tell your granny. But if you're gonna, you know, criticise, tell me why you like the album. Tell me why you don't like the album. Don't just level it at insults because we're not going to breed any kind of community or understanding if we're just going to point the finger and you know call me a fat fuck. That's not going to really get us anywhere. So keep the conversation pleasant. Hmm? Can we do that? All this trolling nonsense that goes on elsewhere. We're beyond that. We're prog fans, aren't we? You know, we're all in the boat together. So. Keep it sweet if you can. My name's been Darren Lock. I've been burbling on about Rush's Fly By Night album. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. You've been a, a wonderful audience. I'm keeping these slightly shorter, trying to rattle through them so I don't bore all the non-Rush fans out there. Tune in for the next one, which is uh, Caress of Still. And with that, I bid you adieu to you and you and you. Prog on. <laughs>